at MITAS. Um, today's MITAS uh, presentation will be on steel concrete composite, composite bridges and the modeling, analysis, and the design to Eurocode. Now, today is a special event as we have over 260 attendees. And now, why do we have this webinar in the first place? As you may all know, in the past, there were some incidents that some tendon ducts were not properly uh, grouted in some old post-tension bridges in the UK. This problem led to corrosion in the tendons and the highway agency stopped using post-tension bridges for a long time. At the same time, steel manufacturers came up with a solution, which was steel composite bridges. First, this has dominated First, this has dominated uh, the market for decades. In order to cater for the high demands of engineers modeling analysis, uh, modeling, anal analyzing, and designing these bridges, Midas has developed a brand new feature, which is the steel concrete composite uh, wizard. So this is basically the main topic of uh, today's presentation. However, before I go on to this, just a few things about GoToWebinar. If you can't see the screen, this might be because this is minimized. So if you just click on the maximize button, this should be sorted out. Also, if your screen goes blank, this might be because your screensaver has kicked in. So you might want to turn this off beforehand. Also, if you would like to hide the dialog box, you can do that by clicking on, clicking on the little red arrow. And if you have any questions, you can just put this into the chat box and we can answer these as soon as possible. So the webinar contents, as I mentioned, today I will be focusing on our new wizard, which is the Steel Concrete Composite Bridge Wizard. Later on this uh, month, we're actually going to have a new release, which is the Pretension Concrete Composite Wizard, and then we're going to have a webinar for that as well. However, first, um, what does this... It seems like we are having some issues with the voice. So if you could just confirm that you can all hear us. Okay, so it's confirmed, everyone can hear us. So as I mentioned, the webinar content, um, we're going to focus on the steel concrete composite uh, bridge wizard. However, we're going to have a new release towards the end of this month, which is the pre-stressed concrete composite. And we're going to have a webinar on that topic as well. Now, what does this wizard provide to us? It provides us with a geometry, the boundary conditions, loadings, construction stages, and composite sections for construction stages. Then, using all this information, we can perform our analysis, result extractions, and then perform composite and steel design. Now, this is the project I will be covering today. As you can see, it's a three-span bridge. The first and the last spans are two, uh, 25 meters, and the mid-span is 30. The deck width is 10.4 meters, and the piers are eight meters high. Now, this is not everything that it is to our wizard. Our wizard has covered further modeling types. And what are these? These are the established modeling types by the industry. So as you can see here, we have the all frame, which basically models the deck and the main girders as frame elements, or as you wish, beams. We also have the all plate when the main deck and the girders are modeled as plate elements. And then we have the deck as plate, girders as frame, very self-explanatory. And then we have the deck as we deck and web as plate and flanges as frame. Now, if I just change to the software itself, I'm going to, for the sake of those who haven't used Midas before, I'm going to do a short software introduction about the interface. So this is the Midas Civil interface. If I just open up a new project, at the top we have the ribbon menu. This ribbon menu is, uh, consists of a variety of tabs. 
all of which are positioned in a chronological order. So in which order you're going to perform your uh, project. So first you can define structures. Here we have the different kind of wizards and the star of today's presentation, the steel composite bridge. Furthermore, you can, uh, you can perform the geometry by using our um, modeling features. We also have different kind of properties that you can assign. Then you can assign the boundaries, the different kind of loadings, analysis. For example, today we're going to focus on buckling analysis, moving load analysis, and construction stage analysis. And then we can extract the results, perform the uh, designs. So for example, precious concrete design, we also support steel design, reinforced concrete design, steel reinforced concrete design, and composite design. Today, I will be talking about composite design and steel design. Okay, so that's about the ribbon menu. Just below it, we have the tree menu. In the work tree, you can see all the work you have done so far, all the definitions or uh, loadings, everything. But you will see me working with this as I'm going through my presentation, so you will um, under have a better understanding of it. And then we have the groups. These are mostly used for the construction stages, however, they have other purposes as well. Um, you will see this again today. And then we have the second work tree. This is used in parallel with the first one. And then the message window, here you can see all the error messages or warnings or uh, the progress of your analysis. Then well, before you start a project, it's always advised to just save it first. So I can just save it. And then let's start. So first I'm going to define some properties. This I can do from properties. And as you can see in this dialog box, we have the materials, sections, and thicknesses. So if I just go on add, different kind of materials can be specified, as you can see it over here. Then we have a large variety of standards. And from the standard, you can choose the database material. Similarly, sections can be defined. So if I just go to sections, add, and here you can see our section library. So we have database or user defined sections. And again, you can select from a large variety of sections. Then you can specify the standard for this. Let's say British standard. And then you can select the um, section. So let's say this UB. And then for this, you can check the section properties as well. Okay, similarly, we have value type of sections, steel reinforced concrete, combined sections. So these are steel combinations, pre stress concrete. So these are used for uh, box sections, for example, then tapered. The tapering can be done in both directions. Composite sections. Today, we will be working with still concrete composite, but we have concrete concrete composites as well, and then still Goethe. So instead of defining these right now, in order to save some time, I'm going to import these. This is, again, another useful feature of Midas, where you can import any materials or sections from the previous projects that you have uh, been uh, working on. So here, as you can see, I can just simply import my sections and materials and press OK. And in the meanwhile, you can see that in the work tree, the materials and sections appeared. If I want, I can just right click on any of this, go into properties. And then here I can see the, uh, the material properties. And then for the section, the same applies. And here you have our uh, composite section. So here you can see the steel girder together with the, with the concrete. And for this, you can check the section properties before and after composite. Okay, so if I just close this down. So this would be for the properties. Now I'll move on to the main part of my presentation, which is the steel composite uh, bridge wizard. So if I just open this up, here you can see the general format of this wizard. We have four tabs, the layout, the section, the load, and the construction stages. So before I actually specify all the parameters in this, I would like to point out that we can save any of our wizards, and then later on you can go back to these saved wizards and open them up. So this is what I'm going to do today. In order to save time, I have already predefined my parameters. So here, starting with the layout 
tab. At the top, you can see a description of all the parameters that you will need to define just below. We can specify different kind of girder types, so steel eye, steel box, steel tub. Then the modeling types, which I have mentioned previously in my presentation, so the all frame, all plate, deck as plate, girder as frame, deck and web as plate, flanges as frame. So this is something I'm going to come back to as soon as I explain what the wizard gives you and how to define things. Then the span information, very self-explanatory, just input the uh, span lengths and how many you have of these. Then you can specify the deck width. Another very useful uh, feature is a uh, support skew angle. Now, all you need to do in order to have your entire bridge skewed is input the amount of skew angle you have. And accordingly to this, the software is going to apply the loadings, the lanes, and the boundaries, everything in accordance to your skew. If you have a more complicated shape, that's not an issue. You can just go on to advanced, and here you can assign different kind of skews to the different parts of your bridge. Okay, so for the time being, I'll just stick to a simple 15 degrees. And then we have the layout offset. By default, we have a reference line at the center line of the bridge. If you want, you can uh, shift this around. Okay, um, we can also define curves. So for example, radius or multi-curves. Again, this is something I'm going to come back to when I'm explaining the modeling types. So moving on to the boundaries, we can uh, account for the substructure or ignore this. So if you just decide to go for the bearing, we can model the bearing as supports or as elastic links. If you define them as supports, then we can specify where do we have the fixed supports, at what part of our bridge, and also the direction of this, whether it's tangential or radial. Now, if you decide to go for elastic links, you need to define the stiffnesses of this. So you can specify the stiffness for the elastic link at the abutment and at the pier. Also, if you would like to specify different kind of stiffnesses at different abutments and the different piers, you can just go on to advanced, and then here you can specify these values. And then finally, the elastic link length can be specified as well. Now, for the substructure, um, here you have all the pretty much the same options. The bearing type, whether you want to have this as fixed or elastic link. If at any point there is something that you do not understand, you can just go into guide and the software is going to provide you with a self-explanatory drawing. Okay, so when it comes to fixed support, obviously at the, uh, uh, the peers were going to have fixed support. Then for the peers, you can also have elastic links. So the elastic links can be specified both for the abutment and for the piers with the different stiffnesses and at different locations, as I mentioned previously. Again, and the elastic link length is defined here as well. Later on, I will explain this length um, in the model. Okay, and then we have the pier cap. So the section for the pier cap can be specified as well as the length of this. The same applies for the columns, what shape columns you have, whether these are tapered or not the heights of these. Also, if you have an inclined deck, you can have different kinds of, uh, different heights of the piers. But for the time being, I'll just stick to constant height. And then for spacing, this specifies the spacing between your columns. So you can have as many columns, as many spacings you implement. And then the material for all these elements is specified right in the wizard. And the pier supports, so whether these are fixed, spring supports. If you have spring supports, then you can just specify again the stiffnesses in the different directions. And for the different pairs, you can go into more details to have different uh, spring supports. Okay, so if I just go back. So this would be about the layout tab. Now when it comes to the section, for the deck thickness, you can specify how thick uh, your deck is. Also, if you're using plate elements, you can specify the haunch height. Now, as you can see over here, I'm using four girders. These girders are positioned in accordance to the reference line. So here I have two, two girders on one side and two on the other side symmetrically. The materials can be uh, specified for the deck, girder, and for the bracings. If these are not the materials that you would like to use, then you can just go into the three dots. And here you can either add in further materials or you can just click on any of your materials, go on to modify, 
and change the parameters around. Okay, then it comes to transverse elements. These transverse elements basically represent the slab of your uh, deck. So these can be specified with different spacings, per division, per distance, or division per span. In my case, I have it as distances and at 1.5 meters. And also the angle types for these can be specified, whether these are skewed, perpendicular, or user defined. Again, if something is unclear, just click on guide and the software provides you with an explanation. So here you can see what's perpendicular, what's user defined, and what's skewed. The same applies for the bracings, so the bracing spaces and the explanation for these are explained just here. So talking about bracings, we can specify those as well from the wizard. We can have two different types, bracings or single beams. Again, if something's unclear, just go into guide. And here you can see the different explanations. So what is the top cord, what's the bottom cord, and the uh, different locations for the brace and for the cord. And underneath you can see what the single beam means. Then for the elements, we can have trusses or beam elements. And we can assign, we can account for the top cord and for the bottom cord for the sections of these, also for the brace. And depending on what kind of brace you want to work with, you can have X brace, V brace, or inverted V braces. And then finally, as I mentioned previously, the different gaps between the top and the bottom cord in reference to the top and the bottom flanges of the uh, girders. And as you can see it over here, I have two types of bracings, type A, which is an X brace, and type B, which is a V brace. Now, when it comes to the spacing of these bracings, the same applies as for the transverse elements. We have different kind of spacing options. In this case, I have chosen divisions per span. And in order to show you the flexibility of our wizard, I have gone with the different uh, brace spacings per girder. Now, what does this mean? Between girder one and two, I have type A kind of bracing, and I have five for the first span, six for the second, and five for the third. Between girders two and three, I have type B kind of bracing, and I have four for the first span, five for the second, and four for the last. And the third one uh, between three uh, girders three and four is the same as between one and two. Also, we can assign for account for different kind of diff uh, bracings. So we can have at support one and two, as you can see in my case, I have type B kind of bracings, and uh, for supports two and three, we have type A bracing. Now, when it comes to girders, depending on your project, obviously, you may have different kind of sections that you want to use for different lengths. You can account for these in Midas. So if I just show the explanation, here you can see for the different lengths, you can account for the different sections, which basically means that you can have different kind of flange thicknesses and web thicknesses, and you can also um, have the splices. Now, in my case, what does this mean? I have four girders. The first and the last one are the external girders for which I have assigned the external sections. So section five is between zero to 19.5 meters. Section two is between 19.5 to 29.8 meters. So this is how you can alter the different sections that you have in your bridge. Then you do not need to specify this for every single girder. You can just simply go on to copy and then you tell the software where to copy this information. Okay, and so for the girder two and three, I have inner girders, so again, different sections. Then we can specify the stringers, as well as the splices, as I mentioned previously, and we can generate 10-point elements. Now, this would be about the sections. When it comes to loading, the pavement and the barrier spacing can be specified. As you can see over here, I specified how wide my uh, barrier is and where these are positioned. So as you can see it over here, we can account for the different kind of loadings, dead loads and live loads. So when it comes to dead loads, before composite and after composite loadings, so I'm just going to whisk through these, for example, like self-weight, wet concrete, formwork, and for after composite, we can have barriers, additional loads, wearing surfaces and utilities. This is entirely up to you and your project, which ones you need to use. And then we have the moving loads. So for the moving loads, we just need to specify which code we want to work with. In my case, I will choose your code. And then we want to account for the live loads. And then here we can specify the lanes and the vehicles. Now, when it comes to the lanes, I want to work with two lanes. The first lane, I want to have it at 2.8 meters from the edge. So as you can see it over here, 
and the second lane I want to have at 7.5 meters from the edge. And then when it comes to vehicles, we can spe specify any kind of vehicle, either using the user-defined vehicles or the standard ones. For today's session, I'll look at the standard ones. And here you can see for different kind of bridges, such as road bridges, footway and footbridges, road bridge for fatigue, and rail traffic loads. For these bridges, we have different kind of vehicles. So from LM1 to 4, including LM3 UK National Annex. For the, uh, in this case, for example, I can specify the adjustment factors in accordance to the euro code as such. Similarly, the psi factor for the tandem system and for the UDL system can be modified. Once I press apply, these vehicles will appear and I can move on to my next vehicle, so let's say LM3 UK National Annex. And as you can see here, we're having the SVs and the SOV vehicles. And let's go with SV196. Again, the dynamic amplification factor can be accounted for. With this, we have specified all of our loadings and going to the final tab, which is the construction stages. Now, if you want, you can account for the construction stages or ignore them. Same, uh, the same applies for the deck pouring. Now, let's see how does this work. By default, the software has defined the number of decks. So in my case, I have five decks. In the drawing above it, you can see the definition of these decks, which one is which one. And just below, you can see how the software is going to do the pouring. So first for deck one, three, and five. On the left-hand side, you can see what happens. First, we're going to have the wet concrete poured. As time goes by, this is going to gain strength. So it's going to have structural uh, strength. And the composite stage is going to kick in. So we remove the wet concrete loading. Then for the next one, we're going to have deck two and deck four. First poured as wet concrete load. And then once the composite sec uh, action kicks in, we remove the wet concrete loading. And again, all the durations can be specified. Now, when it comes to reinforcements, these can be specified as well from over here. To select which section you want to specify the reinforcement for, we can account for the different kind of covers. So let's say you want to have a cover of, 0 uh, of 50 millimeters, specify your reinforcements, then how many reinforcements, you got, uh, how many bars you're going to have, let's say 30 in my case, you can have edge bars or ignore the edge uh, or not. And then the size of the bars, let's say 25, and then just add that in. So once I press apply, you can see in the work tree disappears and also the uh, black dots have turned blue. Now in order to save some time, I'm not going to define all the reinforcements, but all of them can be defined the same way. Okay, so with this, we have specified everything for our bridge. So if I just go over it, Okay, and then let's see what the software is going to give for us. So here is our bridge. If I just take off the notes, so it's a bit more clearer. From the top view, you can see the skew angle, which I have input. If I rotate this, you can see the two uh, piers together with pier cap. And also if I look from below, you can see the different bracing at different locations. Now this is just the geometry. Let's see what do we have in the work tree. As you can see, the work tree is very uh, large now. So if I just expand it all, you can see this is everything that the software has defined for us. Okay, so if I just go back. Now let's see, we have all the nodes and the elements which basically account for the geometry. So we have truss elements and beam elements. Then we have a new material, which is the, ma the material this accounts for the slab. Then when it comes to sections, we have, if you just double click on any of these sections, you can see to which elements have these section been assigned to. And as you can see, we have four new sections at the edges, some further composite sections and the slab. And then we have the reinforcements, which I have just uh, defined previously, as you could see. Then the composite sections. So if I just show you this, if I go into properties, once you check the properties for this, you can see for which elements this particular composite section sequence has been specified. Also, you can see when this action starts, so in stage two, and then you can see the construction sequence. So part one, which you can see over here is the steel girder. 
is being activated in stage two. And part two, which is a material, the concrete, is activated in stage three dash four. So in the similar manner, all the uh, composite sections are specified for you. And I'm going to come back to this when we're looking at the construction stages. But first, let's have, a, let's, let's have a look at boundaries. So for boundaries, if I just display these, here you can see all the fixed supports at the bottom of the piers and the simple supports at the two ends. Then elastic links, if I just display these. So these elastic links connect the deck to the substructure within the rigid zone. Okay, so I can undisplay this. And then we have the rigid links. So if I just display this again, and let's go on to the wireframe view. So these rigid links connect the bottom node of the bracing to the top node of the bracing to the main deck. Okay, so if I just undisplay this, and then we have the node local axes. These are for the boundaries and for certain load cases. Let me display it. Furthermore, we have the static load cases, such as the self-weight, wet concrete, the barriers, and the wearing surfaces. So if I just display, for example, the barriers, you can see the loading over here. Okay. Similarly, the moving loads. So if I just display this, here you can see the traffic line lanes. So because I have accounted for a skew angle, all of this is skewed. So even the lanes are having a skew angle. For the time being, these traffic line lanes are not connected to the vehicles. So in order to connect them, I'm going to create a moving load cases. So if I just go into load, moving load cases, and here I can just add that in. So let's see, the first moving load case, we have different type of models. LM1 and fit bridges, LM2, 3 and 4 including the permit trucks, LM1 and 3 multi including shredling, and then the rail bridges. Now for this I'm just going to ignore the side factor and select the lanes on which my vehicle is running and then just simply press apply. So the first moving load case is defined and then for the second one, for this I'm going to have LM1 and 3 multi shredling and I won't ignore the side factor, and I will take the SV 196 into account. And as you can see over here, we can specify the shredding lanes. So lane one and two is shredding. Once I press OK, all of our lanes and vehicles are connected. Finally, moving on to the construction stages. So let's see what do we have here. So if I just go on to stage one, you can see that we have the columns and the pier cap. In the next stage, we have the main girders together with the bracing. In the third stage, you can't see it, but here if I just display, you can see the wet concrete loading. So if I just go back to stage two, where you have no wet concrete loading, in stage three, you have the wet concrete loading first, and then in the next stage, once the wet concrete has hardened, obviously the slab is going to be placed. And then we have again the wet concrete pouring again. As time goes by, we have the deck. Okay, and similarly, the other um, loads are being applied in the further construction stages. So as you can see over here, just in within one feature, the software has generated for us the entire model together with all these details. Now, what I would like to show you is what else it can do for us. So if I just undo this wizard, First, I'm going to show you the curves. So if I just go back to the steel wizard, and let's say in this case, I'm not going to account for the substructure and I will just have bearing. If I want, I can just click on radius, input the radius and press OK. As simple as that, we have our entire bridge curved. As you can see, all the loading is following the shape of the bridge. So if I just, let's say display on display these loadings. I can, for example, display the traffic nine lanes. And as you can see, these are curved as well. So you do not need to do anything. Everything is done for you by the wizard. Okay, so if I go back again, as you can see over here, we can have concave or convex shapes and multi-curve. Now what is multi-curve? Here, 
you can specify the plan curve as well as the vertical curve and the bank rotation of your bridge. As you can see, I have defined these informations, but if I run the wizard, let's see what do we get. Okay, so let me just take out the skew angle over here. Okay, so here you can see how the bridge has been curved in every single direction. So if I rotate it from the right hand view, you can see how it inclines. Also, if I go to the top view, you can see how the lanes are following the shape of your bridge. So as simple as that, you can change around the entire geometry. So let me display this. Now that you have seen the curves that the software can produce, let's have a look at the different modeling types. So as I mentioned, I will explain these in more details. For my project, I'm going to use three kinds of modeling types. And why do I do that? First of all, I'm going to use the all frame in order to perform the composite design. Then I'm going to use the all plate model in order to perform buckling analysis. Now, why would I want to uh, perform the buckling analysis? During the construction stages, we have a temporary stage where we have our main girders and we have the main girders, which are just the steel. And onto this, we have the wet concrete poured. Now we want to make sure that our main girders are not buckling in these stages. Similarly, the deck as plate and girders as frame is used in order to check the steel uh, main girders. So I'm going to perform the design for the steel main girders and check whether these are going to deflect more or if they are going to pass all the checks. Now if I just, let's say, show you all plates and click OK. So here you can see, just with one click, our entire model has been changed. So if I go on to elements, we only have the trusses for the bracings, beams for the main cords, and then plate is everything else. Similarly, I can check the thicknesses. So if I just double click on any of these thicknesses, you can see which plates have been assigned these. You can just right click, go into properties and change these thicknesses around. So as simple as that, you can modify your model as well. Okay. Also, in this case, you can see that the rigid links have been increased as well, obviously, because we have more nodes along the bridge. Also, the loading has been changed. So instead of UDLs, now we have pressure loads. So let me just display, for example, for the barrier. So here you can see all the pressure loads. And then our traffic line lanes have turned into traffic surface lanes, as you can see over here all the lanes have turned into traffic surface lanes. Now, if I just go, if I just go further and show you the analyzed models. So the analyzed model is simply based on the model that I have obtained from the wizard. So let me just open this up over here. Okay, so this is the analyzed model straight from the wizard, and let's see the results. So the results can be checked in every single construction stage. So for example, if I go on to stage one and reactions, let's have a look at the values, legend, and the reaction in the Z direction. So here you have it, our reactions, and on the right hand side, you can see the legend. Now if I just scroll through the different construction stages, you can see how the software updates all of these, and at the same time, the legend is being updated as well. Okay, now this is a more graphic output. We can have this in a, in a tabular output. So if I just go into three dots, select for which load cases I want to see the results, select all the stages for which I want to see the results, and then there you have it, everything displayed for you. As all of our tables are fully Excel compatible, you can every, at any point just take this into Excel. Okay, so let's have a look at the uh, displacements. So for example, in stage one, the deformed shape and press apply. So here you can see how your bridge is going to deform. 
and you can have a good idea whether the loadings are positioned properly and the materials are assigned correctly. Okay, so here you can see how your bridge is going to deform. Obviously, if this is an, a slightly exaggerated deform, deform shape, if you want, you can decrease the scale of this. Now, if I go further, and let's have a look at the bending moments. Now, when it comes to bending moments, I'll look at the summation. So, in Midas, we have different kind of load cases. These load cases are the dead load, creep, shrinkage, and tendon primary and secondary. Now, in cases when you define these, you can check the results for them. However, now I haven't def uh, defined them, so we just look at the summation. The summation is the combined effect of all the load cases within your model. Okay, so again, if I just go through the different stages, here you can see the development of your bending moments throughout time. Similarly, we can check all the results for the stresses. So if I just go into beam stresses, and because we're using a composite section, we can check these stresses separately for part one and part two. So here, if I'm looking at part one, let's say at point one, and solid, apply. So here we have our stresses, and if, again, if I just go through the different stages, you can see how your stresses develop throughout time. At any point, you can change your units. Obviously, stresses are more convenient to check in megapascals, so you can just change into millimeters and newtons. Now, these were the construction stage results. Let's have a look at the post-construction stage results. So for that, if I just go into stage one, sorry, stage, post-construction stage, and for the bending moment, and apply. So here you can see the maximum bending moment that you could have due to any kind of live loading at any point of your bridge. Again, you can change between the different kind of load cases, apply. So here you can see the new bending moment. Now this is not all for the moving load. If I just clear my screen, so if I just clear my screen, and have a look at the moving load tracer. Now, what does the moving load tracer give us? This gives us the worst uh, positioning of all the live loads for a particular part, for a particular element, particular part, and a given effect. So now, if I just select one element over here, I can apply for this. So this is the worst positioning of, of the live load for element 407, in order to see the maximum bending moment about the major axis. And then here you can see just below it the maximum bending moment. Similarly, you can check this for the different load cases. So if I just change elements as well, and you can change, check it for moving load case one, for example. Okay, so as simple as that, you can check your uh, distribution of moving loads. Now this would be for the results. I'll just move on to the design now. So when it comes to design, as you can see, Midas is an all-in-one stop shop. So basically here you can create your model, you can analyze it, and you can perform your design. So the design can be performed in accordance to the different codes. And here, just by inputting the parameters, you can obtain the results. So let's go through these. We have the design parameters. Here you can specify the partial factors as well as the stresses, the stress limitations, and what checks you want to perform, ULS and SLS. Then for the design material, obviously because we have a steel reinforced concrete, we need to make sure that we input the right parameters for the steel concrete and for the reinforcement material. Then longitudinal reinforcements, just as I defined them previously, you can do that for the other sections. Then we can specify the longitudinal stiffeners, as well as the design position. Now the design position is a great time-saving feature. Basically, you just select which elements you want to perform the design for, and the software is going to carry these out, carry them out just for these elements. Why is this good? Because Instead of just performing to every single element, you can just select the ones that you think they're in the worst condition 
and you can perform the design for them. In my case, I have performed for the elements that you can see over here. Okay, and then comes the uh, position for design output. For this, again, you just specify for which elements you want to perform this, and the software is going to generate an Excel report in which is detailing the material properties, the section properties, but most importantly, all the checks. So all the checks are detailed for you in that design report. Then when it comes to transfer stiffeners, these can be defined as well, transfer stiffeners at the end supports, the different kind of types of load applications. So for example, in case you're not sure what type A, B and C is, you can just simply go to our online manual, as you can see over here, and you can just see what is type A, B and C and the further details. Similarly, the lateral torsional buckling details can be specified as well as the damage equivalence factors. So these are for the fat uh, fatigue resistance and the serviceability load combinations. Now for the serviceability load combinations, first we need to create combinations. So these can be done from results, load combinations, and here just go on to design. In minus you have two options of perform, uh, generating these load combinations. One, manually, two, automatically. If you decide to do them automatically, you just go into auto generation, select the code that you want to do it in accordance with, and then specify the load factors, leading variables, as well as which moving load case is characteristic and frequent. And then based on this information, the software has generated me these load cases, load combinations. And for these, we have a description. It tells which one is characteristic, frequent, and quasi-permanent, as well as what load cases are included into them and with what factor. All of this you can change around if you want to have a new load combination or if you want to modify the already existing one. So from design, now we can have a look at the uh, design results. As you can see, I have already performed the design. So let's have a look at uh, bending resistances, for example. Okay, so here you can see the design forces and the resistances. Again, all of our uh, tables are fully Excel compatible, so you can take them out into Excel and work with them if necessary. But with that, instead of boring you with further tables, I'll just show you the Excel report. So let's see what do we, do we have here. So for element 383 at position J, these are the design conditions, these are the material informations and the section informations based on which the software has performed the checks. Now here you have the bending check, for example, for the positive moment, all the details and the calculation is over here and whether it is suitable or not. Then the same applies for bending resistance and negative moment, again, whether it fits suitable or not. And similarly, if you just go through the different lateral torsional buckling, transverse forces, longitudinal shear, resistance to fatigue, stress limitations, and longitudinal shear for SLS. So basically all the checks are over here and you can always come back here and check which result is coming from where. Okay, so if I just close this down. So this would be all I wanted to say about the composite design. Now, there's two more. I would like to show you the steel design as well as the buckling analysis. So for this, I'll just change to my model for the steel design. Obviously, this has been uh, generated using our wizard, only by changing the modeling type from all frame to deck as plate and main girders as frame. Okay, so what's the difference between this and the previous model? First of all, our deck, as I mentioned, is created of plate elements and our, frame, our main girders are frame. I have also performed the analysis only up until a certain point. So if I look at the post-construction stage, as you can see over here, it's only up to stage 2-1, which is where I have the main girders and the wet concrete load is applied onto this. And now let's have a look at how can we do the design. So just from still design, still code, you can select what code you want to work with and whether if, you, if your beams are laterally braced or not. 
then the partial safety factors can be modified or added in. You can modify the steel material. However, if you're using a database material, you do not need to worry about it. All of the details are defined for you already. And then we have the serviceability parameters for the deflection control for beam and for columns. And then depending on what kind of section you have, you may have uh, further details to specify. In this case, I'll just run the steel code check. So at this point, the software has run the design check for every single element in this model. And here you can see the result. So at the top, we have the design forces. And at the bottom, we have the resistances. Here you can see the different sections that we have. So for the bracing, for the cords, and for the main girders. Now, if you want to see more details, you can just click on any of these, go into graphic, and have a look at the design information, member forces, design parameters, checking the results, and the deflection check results. If this is not enough detail, you can go onto the members, and we can have further details on this calculations. So if I just go into detail, this basically gives us an equivalent report with the Excel report that I have shown you before. So as you can see here, we have all the load combinations stated, all the input parameters, and based on all these informations, now we have our checks performed. So here you can see the steel checks. For, for example, effective cross-section calculations, axial resistances, shear resistances, and other checks. Okay, so if I just close this down. So this would be basically for the steel design, everything that I wanted to mention. If I just move on to my final model, which is the buckling. Now, again, this model has been generated using our wizard. All, I do, all I've done, I have changed the modeling type to plate. Okay, so similarly as before, I have run the analysis up until stage 2-1, where we have the main girders together with the wet concrete load applied onto this. As you can see, this is a full finite element model. So for this, I will be running the buckling analysis. So if I just go onto analysis, here you can specify the buckling. So here, you can tell the software how many buckling modes you want to have a look at, what load factors you want to have a look at, whether these are just positive or you have a particular interval between which you want to see these. If you want to account for the strum sequence checks, if you want to consider the actual forces or not, and what buckling combinations you want to work with. Now, in my case, as you can see, I have the self-weight as a constant load, in load case and the wet concrete as a variable. Because this is a variable load case, it will be scaled up. So using the scale factor, the software is going to know um, how to scale it. And then going on to results, mode shapes, we can check the buckling mode shapes. So if I just go into legend and contour, already for mode shape one, you can see how this uh, bridge buckles. So here you can see the global buckling, as well as if you want to see for more shapes, so for more buckling modes, you can have multi-modes. Here just specify how many modes you want to see and the software is going to display these for you. Okay, so using this, you can com uh, compare the different kind of modes. Okay, so if I just go onto the top view for each, here you can see beautifully what's the difference between all these buckling mode shapes. Okay, so if I just close this down. Furthermore, all these, all these details can be checked in a tabular format. So if I just go on to three dots and here select the buckling mode shapes for which I want to see the details. Also, you can see from mode one to 30, you can see all the eigenvalues as well as the tolerances. Then, just below it, you can see the buckling vectors. And using these informations, you can then update your model with imperfections. So if you would like to perform further analysis, such as material nonlinear or geometry nonlinear analysis, you can update your model with imperfection factors. 
So here, if I just say 0 0.1 meters, I can update this and then I can run the further analysis. However, this is out of the uh, scope of this presentation. So I will stop over here. Now, before I finish my uh, webinar, I would like to point out a few things. For those of you who already have Midas Civil, um, if you can just contact, contact us, we can provide you a trial license. So if, with this, you can try the new wizard. And for those of you who haven't used Midas before, you can download this from our website. So if you just go on to en.midasuser.com, from here, download trial, go on to Midas Civil. And here, just by inputting your details, you can uh, download our software and you can try the full version. If you have any questions regarding the webinar or any of the details regarding our software, you can just contact us at any point. My name is Norbert Kovac and um, this would be the end of my presentation. If you have any questions, please feel free to send us an email. Thank you for your attention.